Hello there guys, in this video we're gonna talk about AWS Lambda destinations and an introductory about them. So what you need to know is that the feature sheds the light on function invocations and takes the results of execution to AWS services making event-driven applications easier and reducing the complexity of every code. As a function gets invoked asynchronously, these are the steps that will occur. Lambda will first start by sending the event to stay in an internal queue. Another process will be reading events from this queue and will execute your function, which was sent by Lambda. As the event gets added to the queue, Lambda would have prior to this simply returned a 22xx status code for the sake of confirming that the queue has gotten this event. Then, no extra information was needed for the confirmation if the event got processed successfully or not. Now, a commonly used event-driven pattern is that of using of a queue or message bus for the sake of communication. So we could either use an event-driven pattern or a queue or a message bus. This is for a very helpful way for scalability and resilience. The asynchronous invocations made by Lambda may place an event or message for being further processed on one of the following. Amazon SNS, Amazon SQS, and Amazon Event Bridge for, for further processing. Prior to this, you would have been required to write the SQS, SNS, and Event Bridge handling code inside the Lambda function and then start managing all the retries and failures by yourself. However, guys, the destinations, it has become possible to route asynchronous function results to a destination resource in the form of an execution record without the need to write any additional code. So an execution record includes the following data. It has details regarding the requests and responses in a JSON format. It has the version. It has the timestamp. It has request context. It has request payload response context and response payload and for every single execution status like success or failure you have the chance to select one of the four following destinations a different lambda function sns sqs or an event bridge and lambda may as well get configured for routing different execution results to distinct destinations so guys then i've been talking about something called the success status and the failure status Let's go ahead and go over them to learn more about each one of them. Let's first enter a function to check it out, to see how it works and what it shows as information. So when you go to a function, after, after running it and executing it, you will get to see something called a trigger and a destination. Later on, for the next video, we'll learn how to configure a destination. Now, these are the envi environment variables that are going to be handling your function. These are the tags and the basic settings, as well as AWS X-Ray, the VPC, the file system, and the concurrency, as well as asynchronous invocation, which we talked about, which needs a destination, and database proxies. Now, what is a success status? What does it have to do with destinations? If a function gets invoked in a successful manner, Lambda will then route the record to the destination resource as a successful invocation keeps on occurring. So destinations provide you with the ability to return back to the calling function, a success response, and later on go ahead and handling the rest of the chaining functions asynchronously. As for the failure status, in case we have a failing status, what will happen and how do destinations work with this failure? Destinations provides you with the capability to start handling the failure of a function invocations as well as their success. In the case of a function invocation ending in failure, like when retries get exhausted or the event age gets exceeded as it hits the TTL, destinations will route the record to the destination resource for all of the failed invocations to get them further investigated or processed. Destinations and DLQs are capable of being utilized at once even, even though destinations must have been considered as a better preferred solution. So in case both the destinations and DLQ are utilized for the failure mod notifications, then the function invoke errors will be sent to the DLQ targets as well as that of the destination targets. 
So there you have it, guys. That's how destinations work in failing statuses and in Hey there guys, after previously learning about destinations and having an introduction for the failure statuses and success statuses having to do with destinations, now we're going to learn how to configure our destinations and where to head and send our failure status and our success status. So in order to add destinations, this will be a simple and a straightforward process. The steps will be gone over in this video. So you head first off to the Lambda console and you click on the function page, which is right over here. You will now you will have to select an already existing Lambda function or you will have to begin creating a new one. So let's go ahead for this example, create a new Lambda function. Let's click on create function. Now we will have to give it a function name. And we need to keep it on Node.js 12.x for runtime. And you can either head to choose or start creating an execution role. Now we should make sure that the Lambda function execution role has access to the destination resource. So choose or create an execution role. Use an existing role. Existing role. You choose the one that you already have. So guys, after uh, adding the required information for creating a function, you click on the button of create function and you will have your first function created. This is in case you have no functions created and you'd like to configure its destination. So after creating the, the function, you will find it here. It will be added right over here with the functions list. After doing this, you go ahead and click on the function name, which is right over here. When the page loads, you go ahead and you will find something called the designer. In the designer, you have triggers and destinations. So as we previously said in the previous video, we talked about destinations. So we click on add destination. Now we will need to choose a source, which is either asynchronous or synchronous. But for the source, we are going to have to choose an asynchronous invocation. So keep it as asynchronous. For the condition, choose it to be on failure or on success according to what your use case will be. So for our example, let's go with on success. Now for the Amazon resource name, after choosing here uh, the destination type, it could be SNS topic, SQSQ, or Lambda function or event bridge, which was uh, dealt with in the previous video. So you choose the destination type that you wish to have, for example, Lambda function, and you select a Lambda function that you've got as a destination. So after finishing this, you click on the save button and you will have saved your very first Lambda function destination.